Now that we have covered stage presence, we are going to look at various presentation aids and how to use them. We all know the old saying, a picture is worth a thousand words, so it makes sense to use visual aids to add interest to your presentation. It is also true that people learn through all three modalities. Those who are more visual through what they see, those who are more auditory through what they hear, and the kinesthetic learners through practical or hands-on experience. It has also been estimated that we recall 10% of what we read, 20% of what we hear, and 30% of what we see. So you can see the importance of showing rather than just telling. So what are some of the presentation and visual aids available? I want you to have a brainstorming session and make a list of some of the visual aids you might use during a presentation. This shouldn't be too hard as we've already covered them earlier in the training. Some visual aids include the following. Number one, overhead transparencies. If you're going to use overhead transparencies, make sure they are organized and numbered so that you don't get them mixed up and fiddle around too much. Number two, PowerPoint is a powerful aid to a presentation, but make sure that you are the presenter and not the PowerPoint. Keep your messages clear and brief. Use keywords and points rather than full sentences unless you want to put up a quote. Remember, don't kill your audience with PowerPoint and keep the human element there when using it. In other words, explain the points and elaborate. Number three, flip charts and whiteboards. These can be really effective in showing activity before an audience. They are great for quick diagrams, charts, sketches to illustrate a point and so on. They are also great for jotting down points in a brainstorming session. Number four, Handouts are great, but should ideally be handed out towards the end of a presentation so that the participants don't get distracted during the presentation. Number five, workbooks are useful in training, but shouldn't just be a printout of a PowerPoint. They should contain full sentences and explanations and be discussed during the training session or presentation. Number six, video clips. Short relevant video clips can be very useful when giving a presentation as they can help to explain or summarize certain things. They also help to break up the presentation and introduce variety. An interesting relevant clip will make a point stick out in the audience's mind. Number seven, pictures and photos. If you decide to show pictures or photos, make sure they are big enough for your audience to see. If you only have a small group, pictures and photos could be passed around while you explain them or talk about them. Number eight, demonstrations. Demonstrations are a great practical way of showing or demonstrating how an item or a product works. If you decide to use demonstrations, test all your products, equipment or tools to make sure that they are in working order and make sure that you've done the demonstration and practiced it at least two or three times before you actually perform it in front of your audience. Number nine, props. Props will add interest to your speech, but must be used correctly for full impact. Just as you would with a demonstration, always check your props and models to make sure that they are all intact and that nothing is missing. Show a prop to the audience for long enough, but don't fiddle with it. It should not be a distraction. Put your prop or model down or away when you finish speaking about it. Number 10, books. Relevant books and reading material is also very useful to get the audience interested in the topic and to get them to do further research. If you are the author, this could also be a perfect way to promote your books.